left between my father and I. As well turned my world upside down and gave it a few shakes. Mr. Pierce is a despicable excuse for a human being who preys on young boys less than half his age. It made my day to hear they locked Mr. Pierce up for what he had done to me and my friends. And it would make my son shine that much brighter, knowing that Mr. Pierce would be riding away in a Georgia penitentiary with 10 feet of concrete separating him from myself and any other young boy who might fall prey to Mr. Pierce. Judge, please make sure that this offender, before you remains incarcerated for decades to come, so that if and when Mr. Pierce is released, you will be so old and frail, you will not even be able to hurt the man. Respectfully, four years ago, my son was an average teenage boy. He was full of life, had a great sense of humor, a lot of friends, and was just being a normal 14-year-old man. And then this happened to him. Now the best way I can describe him is broken. The biggest changes I've seen in him are low self-esteem, a lack of confidence, changes in his diet, and anger issues. His grades dropped when he quit high school, and he began hanging around with a different group of friends. He wanted to forget everything that happened and move on, but he was struggling inside. He began drinking alcohol and using drugs, and was on a roller coaster several months. After some time passed, I think he was trying to pick up the pieces and reveal himself. He began working on obtaining his DVD. He still struggles with low self-esteem and has trouble believing in himself. I can only see what's going on from the outside. I know that I would never know the extent how this is affected him emotionally. But I am hoping that after today, he will have some clothes. And in time, be able to heal and live a happy life he deserves to have. Just please send me and have to pay for tears to the maximum time allowed by Georgia law. He does not deserve to be free to pay off anyone, especially our vulnerable children. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Caleb is very dear to my heart. He's <coughs> Always been there when I needed him. We've always been there when he's needed us. He's been a great friend. Um, Caleb lived in my home for several years. I sent him through private school. He was as one of my own children. And uh, I know Caleb is a generous man, a godly man, a loving man, a kind man. Uh, I've seen him give out of his heart when he didn't have much to give. And when anybody had anything they needed, he would make sure he would help them get what they needed because he was very generous. And I've always found Caleb to be uh, someone that was generous, someone that admitted his flaws, that never tried to, to hide uh, from uh, his failures in life. And I stand here today in, in sympathy for, for this family to my left uh, and this family on my right. I believe in law. I believe in justice. I believe in doing what's right. But I also know the scripture says we've all sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God. Today on my way over here, I was, I was praying for this court. I started praying and looking at my own self and knowing the failures that I have in my own life. And I know Caleb has failures as I have failures. In no way would I justify any act like this. I wasn't there. I'm completely surprised. I've spent many hours and I find it totally out of character, this whole situation. I, it comes out of left field to me and the Caleb I know and have shared time with as a, as a mentor and a friend and a father figure in his life. And so 
that blows me away. But I am here today to ask you to consider all the things that's accused and convicted of and, and to show to show love toward this situation. But what if Kathy Cato hears did these boys was bow and spit? He used pills and alcohol to learn 14 year old boys. That's as I tried to do here and say that's enough. That will serve all the purposes of punishment. It will address the harm caused. I know today is no day for protestations of innocence. We had that time. So I am here to ask the court to impose a 25-year sentence. All other charges to be run concurrent to that and whatever amounts the court sees fit, but for the total to be no more than 25 years. <coughs> Whatever I do, there are um, three families that are going to think it's not enough. As Evie said, there's not enough time, there's nothing I can do or say or punish that can undo what Ms. Pierce did that summer um, and can undo the damage that has been done here. There's also family dozens of friends who have, if one of, their, one of his previous witnesses said, this is not the goal of their time. Apparently, um, there are lots of you who never saw from this defendant um, what these boys did when this happened to them. I do have the benefit of listening to the evidence. Uh, and hearing everybody's testimony, the circumstances of this case, and can you consider that in making my decision today, as well as the impact statements that I have heard. Because it was never enough for those whose lives have been forever damaged, and it is always too much for the people who love the person sitting in the sentence chair. It is an issue for this court um, to decide. And while I don't necessarily disagree with Mr. Hogg's argument that there is a risk when the legislature begins to usurp the authority of judges, there is a very delicate balance that must be maintained. Um, and the reality is. These are 14 year old kids, and there's been no remorse, there's been um, no acceptance of responsibility, and that certainly um, is the Pierce's prerogative and fight for another death, but it does play into the court sentence. That said, there is, as Mr. O noted, a broad, broad range of conduct, age, victimization a number of factors that also have to be considered. And while I suspect um, that what this proceeding today will bring is closure, I don't think it does anything else um, for either side and satisfying what they hope to accomplish, but that it brings this matter to the end. What happens and, next? Well, given the possible sentence the judge could have imposed uh, under the law that 30 years is what the sentence essentially is um, that's better than than we hoped <laughs> I mean I thought that it could be much worse than that the state asked for much more than that so we're, we're pleased but guardedly pleased because uh, 30 years is a long time. He's 35 years old now, so he'll be 65 years old if he's required to serve all of this, which he will be unless his appeal reverses his conviction. But that's the next stage. He wants to appeal. Um, we're talking to him about that process, and we'll probably start that here within the next couple of weeks. Um, some 
important decisions that need to be made about it. Uh, and so he'll take the case on appeal that could last a year or so. You can't show remorse if you're going to trial and you have denied guilt. It just is the way it works. So he did go to trial. He denied guilt. He pled not guilty. He went to trial. We lost. Well, he wants to appeal it, so you know he's not in a position right now to say anything more about how he feels about it than he did when he went to trial and testified. We're in the same position still that we were then. But a person who does choose to exercise his Sixth Amendment right to trial is not a person who's in a position to also say, oh, and by the way, I'm sorry I did it, even though I'm saying I didn't do it. <laughs> so that's where we are. This was a very fair sentence. We believe the judge considered all the facts of the case. She listened to the evidence at trial, uh, considered the impact statements from the victims and the victims' parents, and we believe it's a fair sentence. appreciate the jury, too, because they had to listen to this case, and it was very graphic, um, and we appreciate their service, and we appreciate um, the fact that they reached a verdict that spoke the truth.